that uh, isometric line is that part where nothing's happening in the heart, nothing's contracting. Atriums contract, that's your P wave. Ventricles contract, that's your QRS wave. Last one, guys, is that T wave, that repolarization. So, when you're looking to interpret a rhythm, when you see a rhythm, just straight off the bat, and uh, I'm sure you guys have probably seen one in the clinical setting, I want you guys to use these five tips to um, basically as a criteria before you even start thinking of, oh, you know, that's atrial fibrillation, or, oh, that's atrial flutter, or, oh man, that's VTAC, we better go save that guy's life, or, oh, that looks like a bundle branch block. Guys, ah, don't jump into it. Use your system first, and then use the, um, the method of, um, what is it called? The method of, ah, I can't think right now. <laughs> The, uh, the method of uh, basically blocking out of exclusion. There's, there you go. Um, use the, this, this five system that I'm talking to you guys about. And then use the method of exclusion by excluding the wrong answers first. So let's go into it, guys. So your first one in our five system step here is, um, are there any P waves? Can you identify a P wave? If so, yes. You're moving on to step number two. Step number two, are there any QRS in the um, EKG? Is there a QRS? Are the ventricles depolarizing? Now, usually nine times out of ten, if the P waves are depolarizing, where's that blood going to? The ventricles, right? Atrium's depolarizing, sending that blood down into the ventricles. Ventricles swell. What happens after they swell? They contract. So you'll probably see a QRS wave. Uh, I just typed, I just put two QR. <laughs> Sorry. I put QRR. No, no, it's QRS. Third thing, guys, which we haven't gone over in this lecture or any of the other lectures, but the third thing, guys, is measuring your PR intervals. Now you're like, oh my gosh, what's a PR interval? And you're pulling your hair out and you're saying, oh my goodness, public relations interval? No, 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 no. <laughs> Just relax, okay? It's not that complicated. Your PR interval is basically that line that separates your um, beginning of the, of the P wave to basically that uh, beginning of the QRS wave, okay? So this line right here to the beginning of that QRS wave. And that should basically, that, that shows how much time between the contraction of that um, atrium to the contraction of the QRS. What we really want to understand here, just like we talked about with our SA node and our AV node, what we really want to understand is that, is there a block between conduction systems? After that SA node sends out that charge, and after those atriums uh, contract, is there a breakdown in transferring of that system? And that's really what our PR interval shows us. Because if you have a P wave way over here, and a QRS wave way over here, it's not supposed to be like that. They're supposed to be nice and concise and next to each other. Now the PR interval is usually supposed to be uh, anything less than four to five boxes, okay? And if you're thinking four to five boxes, what does that mean? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's okay, relax. Um, every little box in an EKG, they draw them like this here. I don't even know if I have any room. But they have little boxes like this, right? And these little boxes, and then you have your P, Q, R, S, T wave, right? And they're like little boxes. 
Now those little boxes represent seconds in terms of your heart. So a little box means you have 0 0.04 seconds, okay? And that actually will be on your test. But I didn't want to go into that. I want to talk about the big picture here. But 0 0.04 is 0 0.04 seconds is a little tiny box. One little tiny bitsy box. So this PR interval has to be less than five boxes here to be considered normal. Anything longer than that, you have a widened PR interval. Basically meaning atriums are getting too far away from that QRS. Atriums are not contracting in the succinct amount of time for the QRS to pick up. So that's something we want to note. All right, so fourthly, guys, is we want to understand your rate here. So your rate. How fast are the QRSs contracting? So I want you guys to write this down, your P, your QRS, your PR, and your rate. And um, stop at rate. <laughs> um, I wanted to break this video up, but you know I'm just going to go into section 5, and then we'll kind of wrap it up in the next section before we go into any of our atrial ventricular um, dysrhythmias. So, our rates. How do you understand your rates? How do you count the amount of beats per minute? I want you guys to locate your QRS interval, and you can count the peak of that QRS interval, basically the R wave, and count how many are in a six second strip. That is not the best and not the most accurate way, but it is the easiest way for you to count a rhythm or count a rate. Usually, you'll get a six second strip at least, and then you'll be able to see and hone in on, hey, that's Brady, it's less than 60. Hey, that's tacky, it's greater than 100. Or, hey, that's normal. But, um, you know, you'll have two beats at one time, a long pause, two beats again, a long pause, two beats again. It's, you know, here's the rate, but it's not rhythmic. It's, um, there's, a lot, there's a lot of pauses. It's not um, succinct. It's not, it's not good, you know what I mean? That's the fifth step here. Basically, your rhythm. And hopefully you can see that on your computer screen. You can check it in here. Yeah, you got it. Okay. So the last part, guys, is your rhythm. So you have your rhythm. And then you have your rhythm. Is it irregular? Is it regular? It, are, are they, are they, um, are they cracking at the same amount of beats that they should? Are they succinct? Do they come yep. at the same 